Where are you? Yeah. Love the weir. They've built like... Yeah. I'm just not sure you can get to the other side of it. There's a bridge there, so... Yeah. Just keep your torch down, okay? Hello everybody, welcome to another of our near legendary ghost hunts. We're down by the river, a beautiful place during the day, but as the sun gets lower, worse things can happen. What I want you to do, Kenny's here of course, Hollywood McShane behind the camera, welcome to you. I want you just for a second to imagine you live out in the country all your life. Yeah. You're not bothered by religion of any kind. Mm -hmm because you live in the countryside and you respect everything the countryside stands for. Now that's what people did before religion. And a lot of people out in the wilds, even though they're near wilds, because we're two, three, four miles from a very, very busy part of the Northeast. But they lived a more simple existence. And when you were born, mm -hmm. What was said, and we're going back something like 1,500 years here on this site, and there's a rhyme that says, Mitford was Mitford before Morpeth was born, and Mitford will be Mitford long after Morpeth has gone. Right and this is an ancient settlement. Might not have been called Mitford until no. the 1100s, and I'll tell you that story later. It's just... Imagine 1,500 years ago, actually 1,700 years ago, around about 500, the pagan community that lived here would bring all of the young mothers and their partners and their families down to the river, not to baptise them, because a lot of people believe that baptism is something that came from an old pagan ceremony, like Christmas, like yeah, Easter, like... Everything. like everything else that has been stolen. And the ceremony was essentially, water is where we all came from. And people have always known how to feel, isn't it great to be by the sea? Isn't it great to be by the water? We've always had this feeling of being by the water. So they would bring their babies down and they would immerse them in the river, mm -hmm. the river that gives everything life, the fish. We got to drink water. Our bodies are like seven water, tenths water. Yeah. So they'd bring their children down and they'd put them in the water. Now, fast forward about five or six hundred years to round about 1000 AD, just before 1066, before the French came, mm -hmm. a group of people who were Christians came down to Mitford to the rootless tree. Now, wherever the rootless tree is, they came down to the rootless tree, which was by a river, and they, were, they saw people immersing their babies in the water. Now, they thought that was sacrilege because that's not baptism. Right. Baptism is holy water in a church, the Christian way. The Christian way are no way, remember? Yeah. So the story <laughs> went round in all of the towns around here, Annick, Morpeth, what have you, in Morpeth, those heretics are drowning their children in the river. They were never drowning the river, they were placing them in, wetting them, showing them the water from where we all come, and then it was part of the ceremony of, of growing up and, and being a man or a woman. It's like a circle of life, isn't it? Absolutely. So the Christians then said, well, we've got to stamp, out, stamp this out. So if they caught anybody down here, and of course there'd be groups of 30 or 40 with a yeah. child, you know, family groups, and this was a small community, they'd come down and they'd take the lives of the people that did this. And I think I've found the rootless tree. Come down here. I think it's this thing here. I don't know whether it's the original one, probably not. It just looks like it's a rootless tree. Unbelievable. You can hear the roar of the water cascading down. Look at that. Is that not the rootless tree? That could be, couldn't it be either? Overlooking the water as well. 
Is that not the rootless tree? I don't know whether you can home in on that, Tony. How is that still alive? Oh, it? it might not be the original, but if it's not, it's an incredible facsimile. That is crazy, isn't it? Where's the roots? <laughs> Amazing. So they came down, got hold of people during a service, and ended them. Simple as that. Just shows you the fear that established religion had about the old beliefs, about the old faiths. Absolutely. Are you able to catch that? No, not really. Maybe it's down here, Tony. It's, no, it's a bit steep. Do you think? No, maybe it's not. It's shallow enough to walk across the weir, you see. Yeah. So there it is. Is this, it was said that it was by the bridge. The bridge was built here in the 1700s. But there was a basic wooden bridge here long before it to cross this river that some people call the River Wandsbeck because this is kind of the confluence of the, the River Font, a French word meaning fountain. And you can hear the roar. You can understand why they would call it fountain. And the bridge is also known as the Foss River because the Vikings were here. And Foss is a Viking word uh, that means turbulence. And there is the, a torrent. And you can't deny that's a torrent. You must be able to get across it. There's, look. There's a swing. There's two. One there and one there. Yeah, the kids. You yeah, imagine there must be a pool deep enough for you to plosh in. Oh, so there's a swing off there into the water. But you see, the tree behind it looks so much younger, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Whereas that one's all gnarled. So how does... That looks like the rootless tree, though. Probably the bridge. Yeah, across there and down. But there doesn't look to be a path over there, man. And this old path here leads us to an incredible story. A castle that was seized and re-seized and seized again. Massacres mass burnings right on our doorstep we've got so much going on and please make sure that you share 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 everything that we're doing here get it out to as many people as you possibly can and if you do one of our trusty night owl badges I'm wearing one tonight so I can demonstrate it for you it's right there next to me me hairy microphone so if you would like one of these lovely metal badges please just share it as many times as you can make sure everybody's got the stuff we're doing. Amazing history, a lot of blood and gore. And we're heading to a place now that's got an amazing bloody ghost story. Now, when you talk about ghosts, what image do you see? We've caught full-bodied apparitions. We've caught dark shadows crossing paths. We've caught orbs. We've caught that field that we went to oh, next to the Witchwood, crazy. where that a huge white... Came up, didn't it? cloud came yeah. across the field and at the end of the cloud there was a dark figure yeah. and it was absolutely man-shaped an incredible thing Horton, when we had the whole people walking when we had yes dozens of, of entities walking past the camera we've caught so much and yet what would be the worst ghost the worst entity that you could possibly imagine forgive me i'm just going to plant myself on the wall for those of you that don't know Came close to, oh, came close to death last week when I went through a hole. Yeah. As supporters know only too well, if you're not one of our supporters, you really should be. Came close to death, ruined me rotator cuff, my knee, my hip, black as the ace of spades. And uh, I'm just taking it a bit easy because I know we've got to climb a little bit of a hill soon. But the story, sit down, Ken. Cool. Join me on the on the furry rock. The um. When you picture a ghost, what is it that you, you think in your head? Do you think Casper? Do you think Ghostbusters? Do you think cloudy, shroudy I figure? Think, yeah, that's what I think. A cloudy, shroudy figure that just sort of shimmers. That you can kind of see through? Yeah, yeah. 
This happened here, literally just behind me, in 1934. It's between the wars. Three kids came down here. They're skipping the odd stone. They've got their little net trying to catch minnows and tiddlers and all that stuff that most of us, I don't know whether you did that as a kid. I definitely did that. I did that as a kid. Make. Brilliant, absolute tame mouth yeah. for me. Morpeth, they do it just up the road to, to this day with those little cheap nets that you buy at the local uh, news agents. Yeah. The three kids came down here having a great time. It was about this time of night, just as the sun's starting to go down. And they went onto this hill that we're going to be climbing up next to get to an incredible castle with so many stories. And these three kids heard a scream. I mean, an earth shatteringly, a, a real horrific scream. And they all kind of went, well, what the hell's that? And they could see behind them, the castle wall. And they kind of went, whoa, what's that? And they came down here to the edge of this hillside, a mound that leads up to the castle. And out of the darkness, silhouette up against the sky, they saw a man with long hair, with a sword in one hand, and a severed head in the other. And then, all of a sudden, there was another... Really blood-curdling roar. But it wasn't the man carrying the sword that was screaming. It was the severed head howling and screaming, the eyes spinning in the man's hand. And of course the kids turned, they ran, they leapt over this wall that we're sitting on. They ran along by the side of the river, back up to the bridge and over to where they lived. And they swore they were never coming back. Now the three kids apparently were so traumatized that their parents had to take them in to Morpeth to uh, a doctor's surgery the doctor made them go up to the hospital to get checked out and all three were in shock. So if this was three kids making a story yeah, up, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have took it that far. No. Now that happened here. I would love it to see that. Oh. Well, you'd love it and hate it at the yeah. same time to yeah. see something like that. But we come out every week looking for this stuff and we love the great story, but we want to see stuff. We want to see stuff. So if when we're traveling around, you spot something, you catch a screenshot of it, send it in, because the supporters in us, every Tuesday have a thing that we call the blah. It's like a debrief of every ghost hunt we do. You can ring in, you can talk to us, you can appear on it too, like a little mini night owl's phone in show. You can come and talk to us and be part of it. We'd love to have you on. And of course, if you've got any cool photographs, of anything that you've caught, because I know a lot of you go ghost hunting, you could put that on there too and let us all have a look and then we talk about it. Yeah, it's, it is particularly cool. A lot of stories here. When we first came down, first thing you said was, you just heard something coming through the yeah. bushes up here. Straight away we heard like a crack, like as if someone was walking on top of a branch of a tree and just crackling, just next, just a bit, literally about 10 foot away from us. It was ahead of me, so I didn't hear yeah. it, but you guys, away, you really guys well. both did. Right. There's noises here. Dust off our hind quarters and... That could be water. Well, I don't know. I just got a crack there and we, we're not moving. See what I mean? <laughs> there was a crack there and it wasn't where Tony is. No. That's cool. And again. What the hell? And you know, a lot of people say, wait till it's dark. And yes, I'm a great believer that you can see the dark things that come out late at night better. But from this time, people have seen all kinds of things. And it would not surprise me that there's stuff about, about us right now. <laughs> Just got to watch our steps a little bit. As I say, last time we were out, I had a, a major mishap. Is that the way, Tony? Yeah. Up here? Up here. We're heading to the castle right now. <sighs> Ooh. 
got the wellies on. If you come here, if it's a dry day, you probably get away with a pair of trainers, but. There's noises I just everywhere. heard, I heard a bird there, yeah, I but I heard it. almost like a, somebody talking. Just heard voices behind us, everybody. You sure this is the way, Tony? Is it up there? Yeah. Right, okay, let's uh, let's do it. I'll go the other side, there's no barbed wire. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I need. Um, hang on, just... No, it's all right, no, don't, I'll, I'll, I'll sure. <coughs> Oh. That's what I mean. Hello. Oh. All right. You all right, Tony, getting over? Oh, yeah. I can just step over this. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, we're very close to a major town here. Yeah. And yet, the amount of people that actually died in this neck of the woods was phenomenal. This castle was fought over, won and lost, time after time after time. No, and it's on, it's on the doorstep. Got a feeling we're gonna to have to go up that steep bit. Can you? <laughs> yes, we are. But you see, this is the, the perfect example. Where did all that stone come from? Yeah, Not from did, here. No. It was brought miles to create a wall that thick. Across the there, there's a churchyard with a a ton of stories. I'll tell you more about them. Are we going in there? A bit later on, absolutely. <laughs> I thought we would. <sighs> Look at that. Do you want to take a quick look, Kenny? Yeah. Sorry, I can't. I mean, Please do. there's tracks here, so it's obviously some kind you of footpath. You think that's the way? Okay. Because that looks wrong. <laughs> and I'm just thinking of uh, limping up there would be an adventure. Let's hope there's a back way in. You can see how thick the wall was, though. You imagine having to cart those stones up that hill and how difficult it would be, even if you had a cart or a barrow. How many journeys to build a huge castle on top of a hill like that? This is a beautiful part of the world. No doubt about it. The castle used to be a wooden thing back in the 900s to the early 1000s. Then the French came, captured all of England, as you know, bits of Scotland, not so much, but uh, the north, and they built a thing called a Mott and Bailey castle at the top. Now, Mott, ooh, Mott means um, the physical mound, the mound, that's a Mott. Now, to me, I don't know why you give things a name that's one syllable that means another word of one syllable. Why not just leave it as the mound? Now a bailey is the inside of castle walls, whether they're wood or whether they're stone, the middle bit, the courtyard. So a mot, a mound, a bailey. Now, if a bailey is a courtyard, two syllables, bailey, two syllables, why not just call it a mound and a courtyard castle? But instead they call it mot and bailey. Bit of French kick it in there, so. And of course, they're always surrounded by a deep decline, so it's easier to fight people that's trying to, to take the castle. And you can see that clearly here. And the, one of the most beautiful skies I think I've ever seen over there. Gorgeous. Kenny's already got his camera on. If he catches anything, supporters will be able to see all of that footage. And it, it was weird because the last time we were out and I fell through that hole with a 15 foot drop wasn't attractive been a hospital subsequently um, that was all in the second half the support as bit so most of you will not have had a chance to see that but 
If you become a supporter, obviously you get all of the previous shows. That's over a year's worth. So make sure you join us and become a supporter. Oh, There's some of the wall. I know, I see it. Amazing, look at this. And what was that used for? Did that have a, uh, maybe something for a floor? You know, like a long beam? I don't know whether you can see it better without the light. Do you need the light that, in there? Well, you can see it goes on for a bit. And a big cobweb over the front, so stuff's captured on it. The wall goes right around because we're in the bailey now. So this was all castle, right the way around and behind the main wall of the castle, there's steps into what was used to be underground and we're going in there. Kenny's walked right around the edges so I can see. Amazing story. Right here on my doorstep again. How come we don't visit places like this? Amazing historic monument. And of course, a lot of the trees and bushes that are blocking the walls now weren't here at the time. So you could have a completely clear field to, to watch over. Amazing. Just look at these walls, Tony. Go for it, man. Amazing. Absolutely incredible stuff in all directions. Maybe the necromancer. Absolutely. Would work. Hang on. We'll come round and see it, Kenny. Right. Let's get the necromancer. He's got roots on them. Just hanging on. A massive tree like that, look. See it? All the way up there, all the way down, and yet look, hanging on to the bank just by a little bit of its trunk. That's ready to fall, that, that, that'll fall. You think in the next next couple of years that'll be gone, won't it? Because it's all crumbling down here. That is crazy though, part of the wall's just there. And crumbled. Huge sections of it further down. And then everywhere at this part of the castle you can see right across them fields and I mean literally a mile. That's a mile easily. You can see right across valleys here. That's the corner of this part of the castle here. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And we don't even know that it's here. So when you want to touch it and just feel part of it. Look at these views, man. This is incredible. I'll try and do a panoramic one for you. So, there's the castle wall, how thick it is. Just going from left to right. That's the valley, all falling down away from you. Trees here, obviously part of the walkway there, there's stone down there and a small bridge. Trees here, down where the church is, there's the church spire. There's the churchyard with all the graves in, including Commonwealth graves in there as well. And the village, the small village of Mitford. <laughs> it just makes you feel alive when you see this. Especially with the background, the blue skies, with the clouds coming across the sun just Lighten up the clouds like a reddish pink, greys and blues in the sky. And the moon, we even got the moon up there. It's just incredible. Thick these walls are.
then further up. Take that with some kind of entrance. Could have been a secret entrance for people to come up that way, get in there, look. Because it's only a small sort of alcove kind of thing. But then you come up to this top bit, which is turreted and rounded. Mushrooms grown here. Standing on the wall here. Literally standing on the wall. Supposed to be deer, foxes, obviously there'll be rabbits and everything else roaming in here as well. Up to the turret. Take it. This is probably the window to look out on the village to keep making sure the village was safe. You can imagine the corner you just in there like that. Yeah, it would have been luck. Climbing up here. That's a long way down, like that is a long way down. As you can see, fall from here, certain death. All the way down there, look. You're going to fall from here. And go all the way down there. It's a long way down. If you've got vertigo, jeez, don't go up here. That would be too easy to fall. <coughs> Make sure Alan doesn't get up there. Just throw it from a nest in here by the looks of it. Yeah. Flying very close to you. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. What a glorious place to live. There's a house just down there, big detached house, garage, gorgeous loads. But can you imagine getting up in the morning and looking out onto this? How good is that? Loving life. Past it, I didn't even see it. How would I miss this? If I can amphitheater that underneath. Look at this. Oh my. How would you get down there though? Whoa. Edge of heaven. <laughs> There's a walkway down there, so there might be a way in of it somehow. There's a back bit to it as well. Oh, this is really thin. I do not want to fall. I've seen how easy it can happen last week. Oh, yes. And there you are, 
into another arch just behind. It's as if another wall for added security before you get into the main part. Fuck. Who knows what there could have been. I'm so tempted to walk across there. But that could be unsafe. Back the way I came. Tree here. Right. To be honest, I've got a few other little toys today. One of them is a spiritual detector. Let's put that on and see if we can. The beam is detecting. The noise that you hear is supposed to be spectral energy. You can hear the beep. We're scanning the area right now. Sometimes it shows a little bit of energy. Hang on. Careful, Tony, don't go off there, man. No, oh, no. Now this is where people would guard the valley. I'm being a bit careful. We can hear the beep as I'm scanning. Oh. oh, getting some images on the screen as well. As you can see, there's a lane good. Oh, do you see? Do you see the movement? See in the centre of the screen? Mm. If there's any major energy, it's picked up and generates a noise. I'm, oh, 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 hello. <laughs> if there's something here, talk to me. Speak to me. The sound that you're hearing is apparently energy that's picked up by the device of movement. Don't know whether you can hear that, I hope you can. Directly. The device kind of shows shadowy movement. It's something that's moving the energy here. It's when I turn over here. And now it's gone, whatever it was. I've only scanned a percentage of this area, but. Is there anything else here? Let's walk and find out. Let's go back to Old Faithful. Oh, uh, hang, hang on. I just heard something there. What was that? We're on the top of the mound here and you look down and it's like 70 to 100 feet just down here. Imagine if you had to try and people fought to capture this time and time and time again. I mean, it changed hands about 15 to 20 times over its history. Scottish thistles, I don't know whether you've noticed, but right here there's probably five or six Scottish thistles. Quite often it was the Scots that fought here. Now, back many, many years ago, 
the king, and it was King John, who was hated in the north. King John came here and he had a big argument with the nobles of the north. The nobles owed him tax money, but they didn't rate him. They didn't think he was a good king. He didn't have the north's interests uh, in mind. He ignored us. He just took money, which led to a great rebellion, a massive rebellion here. And what happened was the northern barons that King John called the northerners, that's us, we decided to tell him to go and swing. He wasn't going to, none of the northern barons were going to pay any taxes to this king from the south who just preyed on us and fed off us like a parasite. So they decided to raise an army, but they needed somebody to lead them. So they went to France. Remember that we'd been taken over by the French for a good hundred years by then. So they went to France and they asked Prince Louis, Prince Louis, would you lead the Northern Rebellion against King John? Now, look at this. Oh my goodness. How scary is that, Tony? Have you seen down there? It's a canny drop. Oh, whoa, it's just fallen away. Wow, and down here, over there, scary as hell. Trees have grown on the side since, but I bet they weren't there at the time, even though they're, they're massive now. So anyway, you've got the North rebelling against King John. And King Louis of France came over, the Prince, Prince Louis, to lead the armies. And there's a lot of stories about it, because Prince Louis actually had a a claim to the English throne because he was married to the granddaughter of King Henry. So he did have a link to, uh, to the throne. So he took on the king. The king came up here with his army, seized this castle, and before he did, he went into the small village next door and wiped them out. And I'll tell you what he did with the villagers when we get down into the village a bit later on. But everybody universally hated him. Now, they hated him. This was in 1215. In 1216, King John died. Now, a lot of people believe he died of dysentery. However, you remember, he massacred everybody that was fighting against him in this castle. He also killed everybody in the village, families that had been there hundreds of years, wiped them out and people had to re-inhabit the place. So everybody around here hated King John. King John, a story went around not long after he died, to say King John actually was poisoned. His two favorite, his favorite food and his favorite drink were peaches and ale. And it was said that either one of his rivals, but more likely someone who worked for him poisoned his peaches and ale. And who was the main servant for King John at the time? Well, the person who cooked for him, the person who delivered all of his meals was called Moll. She was from the Northeast. Did you hear that? What is that? Yeah, like a banging over there. It's like a clanging. Yeah. Like armour. Bizarre if that was the case. So anyway, the person that provided King Johnny's meals was a lady called Moll, and she was from the northeast. It's come from the church, it sounds like. She was born in Mel in Mitford. So Moll of Mitford made his meals. All of her family had been killed by John. So it's, what is that? It's coming from just down here. It's I like, think it's come from the graveyard. It's I'm like Because sure. that's, you can see the gate there. You can see the gate, that's a haunted lich gate. There's a story about that. It sounds like it's coming from over that way. Really? I thought it was nearer than that. I thought it was down here. That's the sound of metal though, isn't it? It sounds like it. I hope you guys at home are picking this up. What is 
It is kind of there. I didn't think it was as far away as that mine. Can he just take his torch off up there? Hand signals. I'm not going to tell you what hand signals are made, but he switched his torch off. Don't need it quite yet. So anyway, the thought was, the king died of dysentery. That's what everybody was told. However, most insiders believe that Moll, from here in Mitford. Sounds, I think it sounds like the graveyard. But it sounds, does it not sound like yeah. banging a metal? Weird. You've got to be able to hear that at home. I hope you can. So anyway, Moll of Mitford, obviously said, I didn't poison the food. The food that I gave to the king, I gave to everybody else. And if, if my food had hurt somebody, every, other people would have suffered too. So nobody could prove anything. However, not long afterwards, surprise, surprise, Moll died in mysterious circumstances. And her family, there was two members of her family left who lived in Morpeth, not here. The rest of her family had been murdered along with everyone else. The family brought Moll's body back and buried her next to the river, close to what is the Foss Bridge, the Wandsbeck Bridge, where we've just been a little bit earlier. We're going back that way when it gets a little darker to see if we can see Moll, because Moll's not the only spirit that's down there. <coughs> Let's go up, if we can, to uh, the main part of the castle, because there's some underground bits that some folk have said were dungeons back in the day. Oh, and there's also a haunted story about a, a vicar who lost his life at the bridge. We've got so many tales, but you've got to look out for movement. Look out for noises and stuff. I don't know whether Kenny caught them. We'll find out a little bit later on. And if you do come down here and you happen to be wearing shorts, be really careful because we're in nettle country big style. Look at this. And again, this just demonstrates how thick the walls are. How thick the walls are here. Don't know whether you can get in if I move to one side, Tony, so everybody at, at home can see this. Amazing. Talk about building something that you can defend. Nothing's gonna burn a hole in this. Even if, if you were firing a cannon or whatever at walls this thick, wouldn't make much of a hole. Certainly wouldn't blow it down. And as you go up, oh, this isn't um, ideal. Oh, that's a blessing. I'm, I'm a great believer in, uh, in nature's sign. I don't know whether you can see. You see, they're actually mushrooms that are, if you see the, the small white cap mushroom, uh, if you're a pagan, you call them elfin mushrooms. And yes, a couple of them right now, for no reason. There's no reason why they should be here. Uh, they're not particularly it's not a particularly damper area of anywhere, and he has two of them. You don't, don't knock them, don't touch them. It's a blessing, and there's two of them there. Bonny one behind as well. See again? There's another one there. Oh, there's there a and there. there. Oh, all over the place. Oh. Over. That's sweet. That's a, that's a good sign. It's a blessing, absolutely. And once again, we're on the, the castle wall. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is a... I want you to get up there because you can see down here, down to the, the depth of it. I want everybody to see just how magnificent it is up here. If you were an army coming, and a lot of armies did come here to uh, take on the castle and seize it, you'll certainly, uh, certainly have been seen on your way. And there's no doubt that uh, it would be a fair battle having to try and take it. Just watch out for those beloved little mushrooms. Oh, they're out. They're everywhere here. In 1264, the castle was seized again by William de Valence, King Henry's half-brother. But the Scots, they wanted border land. They wanted land along the border. And I, I know this is outskirts of Morpeth, so it's not really that border, you wouldn't think. But John Balliol, who was King of Scotland at the time, took the castle. His nickname was Tomb Tabard. And uh, Tomb Tabard means empty jacket because the Scots 
genuinely. Ouch. Come down up again. Don't know what it is with holes in me. I thought he was a lousy king. And uh, even though he managed to conquer many a successful castle, including this monster, uh, they didn't think much of him. He ended up giving this castle away to his nephew. And his nephew, it was said at the time, hated northerners. Normally the Scots love the northerners. We're, we're, uh, we've been very friendly to the Scots over the centuries. But Tomb Tabard, John Balliol, King of Scotland, gave it to his nephew. And his nephew had had a few battles with people in the north and he'd lost a few close friends. And he treated everybody around that happened to be Northern English in a cruel fashion. Let's try the necromancer, I think. Let's see if we get anything. Is there any? Is there anyone here? Aye. Don't know about you. I heard a Scottish voice there, or is that just what I wanted to hear? Question everything. I'm hearing metal behind me again, down from the valley. Give me a name. Ian. Who's that? Who's that? My name's Alan. What's your name? What's your name? Is your name Bertram? Is Bertram there? John de Mitford. He was one of the earth. John de Mitford. No. Gilbert de Middleton. What do you think? What do you think of the English? What do you think of the Scots? I'm oh, not so happy about them. Not so happy about them. When was the last time we had this kind of response? Right, let's knock this off for now. Try something else a little bit later. I'm hearing sort of clanging noises again in the distance. Hope you guys are making this out. Going along the castle walls. We'll use another one of our gadgets very, very soon. Some steps down here. All right, okay, I'll come around. 
Got those mushrooms everywhere, Tony. Yeah. It's beautiful. The names on the wall here, Kenny spotted. Excellent. Well, hang on, I'm trying to use a few. Could they use gravestones to build part of this? Maybe. <sighs> trying to get up the, the hill. I bought some. I don't know if it's 1953 or 1853. Yeah, I think it's. I don't know. I think it's 1853. Some people say that you can get in and it's like dungeons or. It's very like a dungeon, man. Because this would be underground at the time. Now I see it. I'm going to sit here and we'll see if we can find... Be careful, you're going down there. I will be going down there soon, It'll but I'm going to try this first. Really Is there anybody there? Is there anybody there? Talk to us. I don't know what that window would have been used for, man. Because it's down, it goes down. You couldn't be fine hours out of it. No, but if you were keeping prisoners. Ah, oh, right. There's no way anybody could get out of it, right? Is there anybody there? Is there anyone there? Speak to me. This isn't. Working for some reason. No. no. Is there anyone there? Talk to me. Some gadgetry just not happening. This bus just moved. See again? This bus just moved. I don't know if there's something in it. What? Like a rabbit. A bush. Careful. Oh, right, some, good, something good, in it. We're down there. No. Probably a rabbit. <laughs> Absolutely. So imagine how miserable it would be. There's not a. There's not a, a, a window, not a thing in sight. Absolutely. That's just not working. It was working before I brought it out today, so who knows what that could possibly be. One of the main stories of this place, this was a place used by probably uh, one of the most famous kidnappers in all of Britain. It was a guy whose name was Gilbert de Middleton, who was a distant relative of somebody who married Prince William, <laughs> the Middleton family. It was a distant branch, Gilbert de Middleton, from a, a French noble family, and he couldn't find a way to pay for this castle. Because you can imagine keeping a castle, it's an expensive business. I would step away from the edge, Kenny, honestly. It's, uh, I know, but it, I don't know about you, but my testicles are, it, yeah. are under I'm my right chin at the moment. I'm, I'm all right. yeah. well, it's a long way down, and I've, I've been down. down somewhere recently, so exactly. I'm just being super careful. Yeah, exactly. But Gilbert de Middleton said, I need a way to find money. So what he did was, he, he kidnapped Louis de Beaumont. Now, Louis de Beaumont was the Bishop of Durham. So he kidnapped him and said, well, I'll keep him here. Probably in there, Probably in, in there. that dungeon right here. And he said, uh, let you have him back if you give me, like, <laughs> the equivalent of a <laughs> couple hundred thousand or whatever. <laughs> so they bought him back. So Middleton thought, fantastic, I'll go and kidnap another clergyman. <laughs> so he went out and he kidnapped a couple of <laughs> French bishops, brought them back, sold them back to France, and then... The story is that he couldn't find any clergy because the clergy were starting to go around with armed guards because people like Gilbert were 
kidnapping them and sticking them down the hole. So what they did was, I think I'll go down as well. Um, yeah, I know. No, I understand. There's names on there which to me tells me that they've been gravestones or something. Do you think? Well, if they've got names on them. If they've got names on them, that's, that begs a question. Now you're alright, man, I'm done there. Oh, oh yeah. Hell's bells. Echoey down here. And, uh, anyway, she'll bear eventually <coughs> kidnapped a French maiden. Who happened right. to be the daughter of a rich aristocrat, right. and the French, the French got really paid off. But beyond that, the ouch! The, oh, it was attacked all the time. It was taken by force at least, at least a dozen times over the years. Yeah, but the thing is, if you've got, if you've got a thousand men and there's 120 up here, you know it's. It's gonna, oh look at this, what a place, what a place. Well, it's just to, it's so that nobody can escape from it, mm -hmm. but there's air getting in. Cause you gotta remember, oh, if, the, if prisoners were kept down here, they'd be urinating, defecating, oh, the stink yeah. going up, you'd need something to air it off. Yeah. But anyway, you kidnap this, um, this French Maybe. Aristo's daughter. Uh -huh. And the French Aristo had a, a bit of power in the English court. So the king sent a man. What the hell's that? That's just his in the head, whatever it is. What was that? It's a bug. Ugh. Ugh. Any more? Yeah. This really? is about a dozen. Really? What the hell? Oh, that's, that's creepy. Oh, that's, how do you get bugs on your head up here? No wind, Parachuting in on the trees? What's? No wind, is there? Not enough to to bring half a dozen bugs on your head. So anyway, Gilbert uh, was still kidnapping. He caught this young girl, and the king said, "Gilbert de Middleton must be stopped. Go to his castle immediately, and bring." The, the young woman home to her father. Now, sounds like, well, all you gotta do is bring the girl back to her father and, and, and look, both, both have gone off just simultaneously. There's one going off now too. That's just, it's still going. It should only go for seconds. How about that? As soon as we start talking about Gilles, Gilles de Middleton and the French girl. Now, the reason I mentioned uh, the, the king sent Ralph de Greystoke. Mm -hmm. Now, Greystoke's another very famous family. The name was used by Edgar Rice Burroughs for the Tarzan stories. Right. That was the right. Greystoke family. Tarzan was a Greystoke. Yeah. So, and you've got to remember, the king of the jungle is always going to be a white guy. <laughs> That's what happens in jungles, yeah. especially when white people are writing stories about yeah. them. However, Ralph de Greystoke came here and the king would have let Gilbert still be free if he gives the girl back. Right. Three days before Ralph de Greystoke arrived here, on the tree that is right beside the dungeon wall, which I presume must be, that. must be that, the girl said she couldn't bear being in the cells any longer. And they used to let her out for like half an hour a day just to get some air. Yeah. When she went out there, she took the silk band from around her dress off, tied it to the tree and hanged herself. Now, it said it was the tree behind the dungeons. Now, I presume these are the dungeons, I'm guessing, but I would imagine there was probably a wall here with a door leading to two cells. Would, would that have been a roof of some kind? Because it's like- Yeah, no, absolutely. That would, be, that would come across to be level with, yeah. with the castle wall here. Yeah. But she hanged herself by, her, her own silken band. And of course, when Gilbert de Middleton realized that the king's entourage is coming up yeah. with Ralph de Greystoke, mm -hmm. looking to get the girl back with the power of the king and the power of the French throne behind the pair of them, he, 
he apologised. He said, I was definitely going to give her back. She was in good condition. Yeah. But there she was, dead, lying in a slab in this castle. Right. Yeah. So they arrested Gilbert de Middleton, took him to the Tower of London, headsman's axe, took his head off. And it's said that his spirit is supposed to walk in this yeah. place too. I'm going to go up and have a look at that tree. Split, split the stream. stream Already? Yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> hey, become a supporter so we, we can carry this on. It isn't even dark enough for us to get the, the bones. Last week, when I went down, and it, it's a strange thing because when a lot of energy explodes, whether it's positive or negative energy, and let's face it, if you fall and get hurt and you're screaming and rolling around in pain, as I it's sadly amazing. was, there's energy just exploding in all areas. As soon as that energy went, and we'd had a few little nibbles, had. but everything went, everything started happening last week in the second half. So don't miss it. Tony, how do people join us? Yeah, if you're on Facebook, just hit the link in the video description and then become a subscriber and part two will be there for you. And on YouTube, join the channel and all the part twos will be there for you. Come with us and you can then check back and watch all of the things on your big tellies, high definition, happy days, yeah, with all the worth. extra bonus footage yeah, as well. It's so it's, a, it's show after show after show and you get a year's worth to play with. And if you do go back through them and you catch something, screenshot it and then on Tuesday night when we have our grand debrief for supporters you can come on and take part in uh, a fun thing that happens every Tuesday or most Tuesdays anyway so we haven't even been to the churchyard yet which is amazing we haven't been down to the haunted bridge the proper bit where Moll who was the woman that we believe killed King John poisoned him with his peaches and his ale we're going to see if we can catch her spirit but in the in the cemetery there's probably the most disgusting tale. Don't miss it. We're on the other side waiting for you. Come and join us if you can. It's coppers. How are you? Anyway, if you're not, if not, take care. Have a great week. See you next week. Uh, if you're with us, let's go all... If you're not going to go all the way, don't go at all, you know, some would say. Come with us anyway. Let's get up that... Let's limp up that hill. Right. There. Yeah. Something on the rocks. Just on the rocks in front of you, Alan. Small. She's lying there. She's lying on the floor. Looks like a few people actually. Yeah. Hello, everybody. As if you died there, lying down. Are they moving? I think. Do you think this could be a burial place? Could, be, you know. Could it be that they'll hold the bodies here? People will have died in here. No, because they seem to be sprawling along the bottom. <laughs>